Yeah. Probably each of the Philippines on three. One, two, three. <laughs> Tonight, live at the Airstream Village in the heart of downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your host, Mr. Dylan Jorgensen, Jillian Minter, Trey Tagliaferri, and music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Tonight's guest, President of Care Charity, Meredith Spriggs. Ronald Corso of 11th Street Records and Entertainment by Eliza Battle. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who's such a carry, Mr. Trey Tayape. Like that. How's everyone doing tonight? Good, 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 yeah, good. All right. We had a great crowd and half of them left with a special guest. That's later. Anyways, um, so this last week was Coachella. Yeah, that's what that smell was. Yeah. A lot of weird things happened this year at Coachella. Justin Bieber was carried out in a chokehold. Yeah. The worst part was he was carried out by Michael Jackson's hologram. Ooh. Also, last week at the MTV Music Awards, uh, Madonna kissed Drake. Did you guys see that? Yeah. It was kind of creepy. And he gave like a weird look. Uh, uh, he said that she tasted kind of funny. And then after that, he wrote a song about it called <laughs> Sexy Hips, Saggy Lips. <laughs> She's like 60. Gross. <laughs> Other news. Hillary Clinton just announced that she is running for president. <laughs> Who's surprised? Who's surprised, right? 20 years in the making. Uh, do you remember her husband, Bill? Remember Bill? Of course. Yeah, ran, he was a president a few years ago, a few wars ago. Um, I, it's gonna be, it'll be funny if she wins and he can kind of show her the ropes, you know, of, you know, especially the Oval Office. He can be like, this right here is a good spot if you wanna, if you wanna have a power seat with some of these uh, world leaders, and uh, right here if you wanna be on camera, Hillary, it'll be good uh, lighting if you were here. And also underneath this desk is a good place to hide your inter uh, Cheetos, Cheetos, hide your Cheetos. <laughs> You do a good Bill Clinton. You remember, I've never seen that before. That was good. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we were practicing that a lot. Yeah. Actually, Hillary already started hitting the road. She traveled from New York to Iowa in a van. In a van. She wanted to seem more warm and approachable this time around. Uh, here's the picture of the van. Uh, yeah, the Scooby van. <laughs> um, followed closely behind was Bill in his van. Right there. Talk about warm and approachable. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you know, Hillary's big in the, into Twitter. She's got like three million followers. She's really big into it. Uh, she actually sent out a bunch of tweets, um, kind of talking about what she would do if she was president. We have a few of them right here. First one: uh, Only women McDonald workers will get fifteen dollars an hour. Hashtag girls rule. Right? Yeah. Next one: I use whatever email I want. Hashtag I'm the president. You know. Next one right here. Uh, Drone strikes headed for Monica Lewinsky, JK. <laughs> or am I? Hashtag evil laugh. That was good. And then finally right here, the cast of Magic Mike hired as interns. Payback is a beep, Bill. <laughs> we had a great show for you guys tonight, but first let's hear it for DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. <laughs> Bonnie with My Vagabond Soul, and we want to know, what is your dream and how are you chasing it? Follow us as we interview dreamers of all walks of life, entrepreneurs, musicians, artists, and much more. Hear more about this interview with Craw and the Salvation Highway Band. Well, songwriting and playing music is my passion. I want to inspire others that come from struggle to chase their dreams and one day make it become a reality. For this interview with My Vagabond Soul co-founder and artist, Kat Ford. I started writing children's books to encourage kids of all ages to chase their dreams. We believe in chasing our dreams and want to inspire you. So visit us at myvagabondsoul.com, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Because now that you know your dream, it's time to start chasing it. Hey you guys, thank you so much 
for coming out tonight. So our next guest is our brand new neighbor right next to the bunkhouse from 11th Street Records. He is also featured in today's Las Vegas Weekly. Please help me welcome Ronald Corso. Ronald, come on out. Hi, thank you for being here. Please have a seat. These I know chairs you're very are so excited. whimsical. I know, they're fun. So, please tell us how you got involved in the music scene in Las Vegas. Uh, I, I started out as a recording engineer, uh, actually back east, and I moved here and built a studio and started recording bands downtown and kind of became primarily known for making a lot of local records during the music boom downtown between like 2007 2011. It's like the, the Neon Reverb era, so we made a lot of records then and played a lot of shows, and uh, yeah, that was basically it. So what made you decide to open a place downtown, of all places, in Vegas? Well, you know, before Downtown Project came here, actually, I was looking into opening a record store somewhere in a place that made sense. Uh, at first, I was looking at the Arts District, but as soon as things started to pop off down here, it just, you know, really seemed like the obvious place to do it. And 11th Street Records, which is opening right over here next to the bunkhouse, mm -hmm. a great location. It's not just going to be a store. It's right. going to be a studio. Tell us all the details. Yeah, we have a big room studio in the behind the store. Uh, it's a, we have a 16-track, 2-inch machine. It's an analog recording studio with a full uh, digital workstation. And we look forward to kind of focusing the music scene downtown again, the way it was maybe five or six years ago. Uh, making a lot of records down here, getting musicians into the store and in the studio, and uh, promoting a lot of creativity. That's so cool, and it's it's a great location right next to the bunkhouse with yeah. a lot of live local bands anyway. Yeah, and not only that, but uh, it's a great place for in-store performances by touring bands that are playing the bunkhouse places. It's a great place to do signings or uh, in-store performances. Or uh, We actually have a web show planned also. We're going to do like live uh, performances in the studio and film them for webcast. So it's really exciting. It's a great place to be. Well, we're excited for it to open. So when's the grand opening? Grand opening, we'll have a party in a couple of weeks, but we're soft opening on Saturday morning. Right around the corner. Yeah. That's so exciting. I know we've been waiting for this for a while, so yeah. I'm sure you have been as well. It's been a lot of work, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. And uh, if you, once everybody leaves here, pass by, stick your nose against the window and take a look. It's we definitely cool. will. So where can people follow you till the big grand opening party and uh, find you online? You can find us in, you know, at 11 Street Records on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. And uh, the site will be going live. The, when we flip the open sign, we're going to flip the site on too. So uh, 11streetrecords.com. Okay, great. Well, we can't wait till this weekend for that. Now, Thank I know you. you've had a lot of honors in opening this studio and store it's next true. door. The accolades never stop. It's true. Yes. Well, we have the all-time high coming right now. So... Bonnie actually has something very special for you. Bonnie, thank you so much. What we have for you is a certificate of awesomeness. I already have one of these. That's no, I not, don't. I really <laughs> that's not funny, Ronald. Gosh, that wasn't in rehearsal. <laughs> Where else can you get such an award like that? Nowhere, thank you so nowhere. much for being here. We're really excited to follow you, to show up at the grand opening. We're going to the party, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All Absolutely. invited? Uh, and yeah, and invited. everyone pick up this Today's Weekly. So. Yeah, Today's Las Vegas Weekly. There's a really, really cool picture in there. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. And up next, we have Dylan with the president of Caridad Charity, Meredith Springs. <laughs> Take a break and step out to the dazzling lights. Start where it all began. Try your luck on Fremont East. Listen to live music as you make your way down the street. You'll collide and connect with amazing people. Later in the night, you'll find a variety of restaurants ready to satisfy any appetite or craving you may have. Pick any bar, lounge, or cafe. Have a craft cocktail while the kids go down the slide as you relax and unwind with your favorite drink.
Explore the shops and galleries you'll find curated items just for you. You'll love downtown Las Vegas. Show the world. Visit us online at lovedtlv.vegas. our next guest. She's the Southern Nevada Regional Coordinator for Homeless Outreach, but she's also, as you all know, a Real Housewives binge watcher, and she's the President and CEO of Caridad Charity. So please put your hands together for Meredith Briggs. Come on out. What up? Hi. Thanks for coming out. Hi. Good all right. to see you. Okay, actually, you're on this side. Oh, Come over here. Just kidding. I didn't want to sit there. No, no. You get the better camera on you. That's all why right. we got to put you in that seat. Okay. Are you good at these? Or have you been in one yet? I have not. Oh, okay. Well, you haven't fallen over yet, so you're doing good. All right. Okay, so let's talk about. Uh, oh. No, I'm just. It's okay. Keep oh, you're going. just testing the I'm water. ADD. You're kind of one of those people that wants to like, feel how far yeah. she can go, just keep another going. range. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Well, I want to talk about uh, this Nacho Daddy event you had, and uh -huh. I heard people were in their underwear, so it seemed like a logical place to start. People were not in their underwear. No. Um, actually, I'm, no offense to anybody, but I'm glad they weren't. Um, so we do a thing. It's called Undie Sunday. Um, the you charity can see why I got confused. We, we started. <laughs> we we started Undie Sunday, and it's a sock and underwear drive for homeless charities. And we actually started that, I started the charity back in San Diego in 2010. And so we started doing Undie Sunday drives. And we actually had a superhero who I shall not say his name. It's Joey from the podcast. Uh, well, no, no, this is pre-Joey. Oh. Pre-Joey, we had a, a, what I thought was a really creative name for a superhero, something to do with underwear. And we got um, a nasty letter from his lawyer saying that we couldn't use that name, that it's already been used in a children's book. So we had to come up with a I new have no <laughs> idea. I am so curious I'm not going to say it because I'm not trying to get the charity shut down. Okay, okay. But um, <laughs> so we have a superhero. We had everybody on social media come up with a superhero name, and then we had them vote. And so Mighty Tidy is our superhero. All right, you like that? So Mighty Tidy. Mighty so, Tidy. So yeah. Joey of the podcast, uh, those of you that know him, he is actually our superhero, and he saves the world from bad sock and underwear donations. Wow. Good True for story. him. I like that. <laughs> Okay, so um, well, you've been dealing with uh, home, like the homeless situation downtown for a long time, and I you've made it I pretty. Need to, hold on, I need to yeah, no, you can. Yeah, I thought you were a little more too. Okay. Um, but yeah, but I wanted to uh, start by like, you know, if you had unlimited resources in this charity, if it accomplishes everything you dream, how would downtown be different? Oh, that's a loaded question. No, I um, gave it to you ahead of time. Yeah. you should be all prepared. Yeah, no. Um, this, <laughs> uh, this is a. Uh, well, the charity itself, I work with the existing resources that we have in this community, so we keep the cost down. Um, so really low cost um, per client what we're delivering. But really, really, really what we need in this community and what we're lacking is a wet shelter. Um, we have uh, a really high homeless population in Las Vegas. But, and a lot of folks ask me why. Um, there's a lot of reasons it's a complicated, complicated issue. But all of our shelters and our existing resources, you currently can't access if you are intoxicated. Um, so that's a problem. Oh, so it's even by a wet shelter, it's a place people go when they're drunk. To when start they're drunk. Sobering. Um, yeah. Currently, what this community uses as shelter and transportation, I call it taxi and hotel, um, are the hospitals and the police. So mm. that's a really, really expensive, expensive for solution. Exactly. Right. So we really need to either lower our barriers or to create some housing for folks. It's called Housing First. Um, to where you just put homeless into the housing, no questions asked, and other communities have done this successfully, and the federal government has proven this is right, and so they're changing the funding to where um, you have to do this, and so I liken it to a gift. Like, what's your what's your favorite thing? Like, if you could oh, buy anything, anything in the world, if you could buy anything, what would you buy? Oh, I probably want a robot. Oh, just a robot? No, like awesome. Like the, what kind the, of robot? The um, Honda robot. It's a big robot. Okay. It's really expensive. Do you want something more okay, normal? Okay, so no, no. If you could get, how expensive? I don't know, a couple hundred thousand. Okay, so say you got that. Yeah, imagining. Imagine that you got that. Got it. Really cool gift, right? Yep. Okay, but you so, so can't cool. take it outside. Okay. All right. And you can't use it on the weekends. Well, that's the time he's and the best. And you have to go to bed at nine every night to keep the robot. Would you still want the robot? Uh, and you I couldn't mean, show it to anybody else either. Oh, I can't. Well. I don't it? know, I, and then I can just imagine it. 
Well, yeah, I, I don't, no. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you I don't know. Okay. Maybe it would take a lot away from it, but it's so still my brother. Let's liken that to a homeless person. We give them a house. We make them have rules. They can't have their friends over. They have curfew. They can't, you know, do all these things. It's kind of like your robot. Well, what's the point? Why should I do this? You and I don't have those rules. Why should they? Right. You know. So. Right. Okay. Um, well, I want to talk a few numbers. So, like, you know, you've been studying this for a long time, but um, tell me. Oh, yeah, prepared. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but you know, I mean, I. I see homeless people all the time when I'm walking around, but I don't really know what's going on downtown. So could you just enlighten sure. me and the audience? Sure. Um, so I got into this mm, a little over a year ago in Las Vegas. I was actually doing homeless services in San Diego. I was homeless for a time. I don't know if everybody oh. knows that. I was no, homeless. No, didn't know that at all. Um, yeah, homeless. And you were a VIP host, but yeah. <laughs> I guess they're kind of our... I have our a really weird background, background. <laughs> so yeah, I should start there. I actually... <laughs> I went to seminary school for those of you no. who might be some shocker like faces in the audience. Yeah, I went to seminary, seminary. school, homeless VIP host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like everybody's. <laughs> and so I story. went to. I was a youth pastor for 13 years. I went to seminary, graduated with a master's in divinity, um, worked at a Christian college, um, was even doing some teaching, so adjunct professor, and then lost my job in 2008. Uh. It was the week that the market crashed back in October and found out that a master's in divinity in 13 years of youth pastor experience really doesn't count for that much in the okay. rest of the world. Um, so couldn't get a job, really struggled. Um, oh, before that I forgot, yeah, there was an intermission. I did VIP hosting, which is really weird and whatever, but that'll come, come into play in a second. Um, they called me Reverend Cocktail at the seminary, okay? Oh, man, um, Reverend Cocktail. But yeah, so uh, was homeless, lived out of my car, and couch surfed with friends but realized with a master's degree, if it could happen to me, it could happen to anybody. Um, so then started the charity, and then came here, was burnt out, um, got back into it, um, kind of revived, loved the community here, and then have just seen a change, the surge that I was talking about with the federal government. They've really put some support into it um, to say, hey, you're doing it wrong, but here we're gonna help you with the tools on how, and so that's how I became the lead in this community. Okay. And so I have numbers. All right, let's do this, so we have time okay. here. So we have housed, um, okay, everybody has their little clapper this. hands, get your clapper hands ready. Since January, this community has housed 322 veterans. Yeah, nice. Do uh, so you have a little clapper hand? Oh yeah, I got a clapper yeah, hand. Yeah, I'll do that. I, don't, I didn't bring one. Okay, I'll so, do it for you. Uh, and then since January, we have housed 79 non-veterans. Yeah. Permanently, permanently <laughs> in housing. Oh, yeah. Lenny's got one too? Yeah. The uh, little, the dog's so got one? So actually there's a side note on it's these. Rocco, by the I way. use these in all my meetings. Um, I know I'm in charge and I have like a lot of meetings with federal, city, county folks. And meetings get really boring and stuffy. And yeah. so we use the clapper hands, so. Boring meetings, and no more. Dogs, if we had dogs in my meeting, nobody would ever be angry. <laughs> like, we could get a lot more done in my meeting. Deadly and Rocco, yeah. Can we take oh, them? Oh, when I whistle, it comes Can I have them else, at yeah. my meeting? Yeah, you bring them. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Them. Okay, we only got a couple of minutes. I okay. want to jump to your game. Um, any more numbers you want to throw out there, or are you good? Nope, nope. Oh, that's no, a good that's one. Okay, so yeah, so we're going to play a game with the audience. This is something Meredith came up with, and it's called. Um, Drunk, tourist, or homeless. So I see a lot of so crazy you, stuff when I'm walking So yeah, around. you guys get a vote on this. So this is very interactive. No, no, not homeless. I took the homeless out because that's kind of like. Eh. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. What is it? So drunk or tourist? Oh, drunk. Just drunk, drunk or, or tourist. tourist. So okay. you guys got to guess. We're gonna put up the picture. Are they got drunk three or of them. Are they tourist? Okay, we're gonna do it by um, sound of applause. So go ahead and do the first <laughs> one. Okay, drunk or tourist, guys. Okay, Yell are you gonna tell the person in the middle? Just everybody. Just guess. What do we got? Do we got oh. tourists? Tourist? If it's a tourist, it makes a noise. Yeah, tourist. Okay. okay, how about drunk? Drunk. Who thinks they're drunk? Okay, next slide. <laughs> they're a tourist. They're not drunk. Ah, okay, you guys are next wrong. slide. Silver is complete. Okay, be. drunk? Okay, tourist. Okay, next slide. <laughs> He's drunk. Oh. Okay, <laughs> next slide. All right, everybody's drunk or tourist? Picky. Drunk. Drunk. Okay, Taurus. Oh, you gave it away before they got to pick. Okay, yeah. whatever. Yeah, he's drunk. <laughs> drunk, drunk, drunk. Okay, yeah, last yeah, one. You know, you know, drunk, 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 drunk or Taurus? Drunk? Oh, no way. No. Taurus. So, Taurus. Next one. Next slide. 
Taurus. Oh, Taurus. Yeah, I okay, can no. see it in her eyes. Last slide, last slide. Drunk? Nope. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Nobody has a cape last on. Last one, last one. Yeah, he's drunk. Okay, and he is? Neither. He's Mighty Tidy. I tricked you. Oh. That's Mighty Tidy. That's Joey from the podcast. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Neither. That was a good ending. So yeah, some people got to split. So, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for coming about your charity. Thank Where can you. people check it out online? Uh, the URL. Uh, yep. C a r i d a d charity dot com or on Facebook. It is C a r i d a d l v or on Twitter. C a r i d a d. Oh yeah, it's on the shirt. It's on the shirt. All right, oh, everybody, yeah. give us support. <laughs> give Meredith a round of applause. Thank, thank you, you for coming out and stay tuned for our performance guest coming up next. All right. Thank you. That's great. a battle. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, let's hear it one more time for Eliza Battle. Yeah. You can check them out at Punk Rock Bowling on May 24th. 
Um, that's our show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again for coming. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram, YouTube, all that stuff at Downtown Podcast. Let's hear it one more time for Liza Battle. Yeah. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.